Voice print identification. Your floor number, please. Decker, 97. 97, thank you. Well, welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, doing another Blade Runner video, and this one is about Deckard's gun itself. Um, this is one that I ended up making because Deckard's gun, for some reason, has a huge passionate following in the Blade Runner collecting community, uh, to the point where it's pretty much um, intimidating and not something I want to get into. Uh, I have seen Deckard's gun, and you know, it's, it's sort of iconic, but like... I don't put it in the same league as Luke's Star Wars Blaster or Kirk's Star Trek Phaser. Um, and many people had mentioned, hey, you've got all this other Blade Runner stuff, you're going to get uh, Deckard's gun. No, I'm not, because it's pricey. There is a pretty well-known, very detailed kit, uh, sort of a model, if you will, where you can open it up, you can put bullets into it, all that kind of stuff. It goes for like $1,000. No, thank you. Uh, and there are other like lesser kits, but again, you have to really pretty much assemble the whole thing yourself Five or six hundred bucks for those again not happening. No way I had almost thought now a few years ago Adam Savage had posted a video uh, He had mentioned that there is in Japan a water gun that is in the shape of Deckard's pistol and It's 10 20 bucks. It's dirt cheap. Get it while you can guys because once this video goes up, everybody's going to want it, and the price is going to go up. And it did! And it has sat in the, like, $80 range for years. I've been watching. I've always thought, if this thing ever loses popularity and is not sort of sought after by collectors, maybe I'll get it then. It has always sat at, like, the $80 range. I'm just like, no. I'm not spending 80 bucks for a squirt gun. And some people, they then take it, they fill it with sand or some kind of epoxy or something to give it some heft, and then they paint it all and they make it look all sexy and proper. And I'm just like, that's a lot of work and a pretty hefty price tag for the gun that is, sure, central to the movie series, but I don't think I want to go that route. However, what you're looking at here is a squirt gun. This is one that I saw somebody post, I believe on Reddit, uh, they had taken the X-Shot, a uh, single fill, I think it's called, squirt gun, and actually dressed it up to look like Deckard's pistol. And when I saw that posting, I'm like, you know what? I think I could go with that. How much is the X-Shot pistol? $7. Sold. So if you combine all the bits that I have done to this X-Shot, it's been 25 30 bucks total, and it was a fun little project to work on. So, I got myself a Deckard Blade Runner pistol for a very reasonable price, and I'm very happy with the end result. Let me show you how we made it. So the blaster does begin its life as a water pistol, but in this case, it's this, the Zuru X Shot. And this is the Micro Fast Fill model. Uh, you can see this is actually a very close approximation of what uh, Deckard's gun looks like. Like, that's pretty darn close, actually. Um, and I'm actually totally going to give credit to um, a guy on Reddit who posted this picture of his Deckard blaster, where he pretty much nailed it without going into 100% authenticity. And that's where somebody said, my God, where'd you get that from? And the guy was like, it's, an, it's a Zero X shot. Now, in his case, you'll notice that um, he's actually filed off this bottom bit. And if I turn that around, I'm going to see if that's even doable with this real thing, because I don't know how close that's going to get. But for seven bucks Canadian, I got a very good uh, starting, starting point. Uh, let's open it up and have a look. And I have to just rip it, I'm afraid. Well, that's it free from the box, but I got these little spindly bits holding it in place. I had to yank that out. You can see there's like a little nasty little plastic uh, fastener on there. Get that other one. There we go. 
Okay, so the gun is free from its container. Obviously, I'm going to have to peel off these stickers and do something. It's going to need a big paint job. Um, as a water gun, though, basically the idea is uh, if you're in like a pool or some scenario where you can quickly uh, get a whole bunch of water, you pull the trigger back. That opens up this, and then basically you can just submerge the water pistol. It'll fill up right away. Now you're able to squirt your uh, opponents. That's the idea behind that. And I had nearly thought, because the guy on Reddit had his uh, LEDs inside here, I thought, well, shoot, since this is clear plastic, maybe I could do the same thing. I mean, if I could just mount some you know, LEDs inside there, paint everything else around it, that would work. But in closer examination of that photograph, I realized that he's got it in here and he's removed this bottom bit. And I just don't think without without getting a, a knife to it, I'm not going to be able to free any of that stuff. So in my version, what I'm going to do is just stick a couple of things on here because that's kind of where they would be. Oh, there's a couple of holes there, actually. Um, that's sort of where it would be if it was the Deckard gun. So I'm not going to remove this, even though that would look a little closer and then you'd be able to get glowing lights inside there. Not going to bother with that. I'm just going to paint the thing um, and stick a couple of jewels on there to make it look like Deckard's gun. Okay, I've got the stickers off now and we're in the great outdoors because I'm going to be spray painting this thing black with some primer. In order to do so, I've got a little painting uh, uh, alcove thing here. So going to take an old coat hanger, put that there, and I'm just going to hook that right under there, hang it, and spray it. Now, the trick is, I want to make sure the paint gets all the way around all this particular uh, little bits and pieces, so I've got a little plastic thing that I'm just going to use to wedge that open so that as I spray, I'll get rid of that later, but as I spray, that will actually paint properly all the way around these little grooves and stuff, so you don't have any bright blue or uh, green showing in the final product. So, I'm going to just hang it up in there like that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, we'll just start, start start spraying. I think we're done. Um, now I rotated the gun here, so I actually made a little rig just so it would get a full paint job everywhere. Put a little pl piece of plastic through there. But I'm overall pretty happy. I think the front's got a little pinkish there. Otherwise, not bad. I do have to pop that little thing out. Try my best to prop up the camera here. Let's take that out so that is now garbage. There's a little bit of green in there, but if I close that up, yeah, there we go. So that's the little rig taken out. There's obviously a bit of white there from where this thing was pulled down. A little bit of orange inside there I'm going to clean up. A couple of spots of white, but other than that, and the front. So basically, I need to I'll just make sure it's. Yeah, okay. So I need to do a little bit back here, around there, and a little bit on the front, and then we're basically done. Right, so now we have a black gun. I'm just going to take off this little post that I've been using to hang it from. We need to take this and make it look a bit more like that guy did in that picture. Now, the first thing that I want to do is actually just make the handle brown. In the movie, it's actually kind of a clear amber uh, gel almost thing that had uh, metal part uh, pieces that kind of added it to the original toy or the original uh, prop for the movie gun. Um, 
I think to try and paint this thing orange, it's not gonna look right. It's definitely gonna look wrong. That um, other photo that I got where the guy made the handle look like it's made of wood, I kind of like the look of that. I'm gonna see if I can recreate that, which is not gonna be easy. Step one, I'm gonna paint this area brown. Now, uh, in that guy's version, he's actually got it, let's see, it's sort of, the bottom is black, and he doesn't paint up here in black, or, or in wood. Uh, I think he kind of cuts it off here. So basically the plan is, we'll paint this area along this line, follow this squiggle here, because I want to make the back, the back looks like it should be black, because that's got like a grill and stuff. So we'll only make this section here wood, if we can. And it starts off by getting some brown paint and uh, just basically painting. I'm going to do it freehand. Thought of maybe using painter's tape, but this spray paint isn't that durable, so it will just peel off. So I'm just going to freehand some brown in that area, and then flip it over and do the other side. Yes, I know, I'm using trim clad rust paint that shouldn't really be used for this purpose, but I didn't really relish the thought of going into the local hobby store. In these unprecedented times, I'm uh, keeping my exposure to stuff at a minimum. We had to go to the hardware store, so I thought, you know what, brown paint is brown paint is brown paint. So let's just use this stuff. It's got a nice brown color. I won't, I won't tilt it up. I'm uh, just going to give it a little stir here, make sure everything's all ready to go, and then we'll start painting. So from the uh, hardware store, I got these Bennett Artists brushes. They're angular brushes. I reckon this one's going to be my winner because it's got a nice wide brush. And I'm just going for it. I'm not going to bother putting this into its own little container or anything like that. Let's just start painting. Turned out not too bad. It's all painted. Gotta let it dry. I did one side, let it uh, dry a bit, and then I picked it up and did the other half. Even got up that little area in there, so that's good. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna let it dry probably a good 24 hours, and then uh, try and woodize that wooden uh, that that brown bit. Um, I uh, take it back about this trim clad brown brown paint is brown paint is brown paint. Uh, this stuff requires um, uh, paint thinner in order to take it off, so I've got a little bit on my fingers here, but not to, not to worry. I'm going to let this guy dry now, and uh, we'll proceed to the next step. Right, so now that it's been a day and this is dried, you know, I'm actually kind of glad that's the, the paint that I ended up using, because I think this will be a lot more durable and used to more hand gripping going on, so I'm pretty happy with that even around there has done very nicely. Um, so the trick now is we basically want to make that look like it's wood grain and I've looked up online how to do that. Um, the other guy had done a very nice job and I read the comments in his post something about dipping, wrapping, I don't know, some kind of complicated procedure. I thought well I don't really need to go that degree with it. I just want this thing to not look like it's painted brown. I want to give it a wood grain look. Now, I actually found a couple of very good videos where people have taken some paint um, and with a big sort of a paintbrush like this, uh, here's some brown that I prepared yesterday, you just sort of streak it on and that does look, I don't know if that's coming out in the light or not, but there are, there is a streakiness to the black there. In fact, let me just do a bit more. So here's a, a paint, an area I have not painted yet. Get a little bit of black on my brush and then give it just a bit to dry it out a hair here. If I just paint with kind of streaking motions like that, I don't know if you can make it out. It's just, yeah, can you see how, there we go. You see how that kind of gives a, uh, almost like a wooden pattern. Now, I mean, it, it looks just like crummy paint from this angle, but I think if I do something like that, 
on this handle, we will end up with something of a wood grain finish. I hope, anyway. And the benefit is the fact that I'm just putting black on it means that I was thinking of masking off the top and bottom, but if I'm just doing streaks down here and I get some black down here, that won't matter because you won't really see it. So, nothing like just giving it a try. Okay, so this is not going to look good to you, but I'm going to just see how it looks to my eye. The level of the camera along with the glare from the lights is going to make it look kind of crummy to you, but I'm just going to go for it here. So I want to just have those kind of broad strokes and go. Not bad, actually. Get in there. It's sort of a case of less is more. If you can at least, at least make it look fairly uh, wood-esque. I'll probably just give that a little wipe with my finger. This stuff is uh, some... Uh, Paints used on D&D figures. Big thanks to my brother for uh, lending me that and the paints and the paint brushes. So this stuff is a little more uh, easy on the fingers. I don't have to get paint thinner out in order to uh, clean that off. But this has turned out rather well. And again, just big streaks. That's coming along, actually. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a proper lit close-up in a second. I'm just making sure that this looks okay to my eye as I'm painting it. Um, that looks not bad, actually. We just, uh, again, not professional, but uh, I think I need to just crisscross a little bit because some of these lines look a little too uniform. But I think... That's okay. That is okay. Just needs a little dab in there. Yeah. That has actually ended up pretty decently good. Get in that line, if I can. Yes. There you go. There's a good report of what the wood grain looks like. Honestly, it looks better in my view than it is than the ca camera is capturing, but yeah, it, although it just sort of looks like black streaks to you, it, it has a wood grainy-ish kind of a quality to it. Good enough for me, anyway, in this particular part of the project. Now we got to make all this black stuff look metallic. Now comes the fun part, although it's kind of just more artistic and should be easy, theoretically. I got to make all this bland, drab, black look kind of shiny, metallic, etc. I'm going to hold, I'm going to try to remind myself to keep holding near the trigger because I still, I know that's dry, but I want to make sure I don't give it any smears. Um, same application as before. This time I've got some gun metal, again, thanks to my brother, and I'm going to dab the brush, give it a little sort of a drying thing there. And basically what I'm going to do, now let's start on the underside just to give it a, a, a first uh, blush here. Yeah, I basically just want to Highlight all the corners, but I don't want to like necessarily paint them. I'm kind of it's almost like applying makeup in a way to this to, to this toy and Essentially just trying to make it look uh, Accentuate its corners and features. I'm gonna avoid right there where it mentions the uh, the brand of the gun the squirt gun so I'm just gonna go around and highlight all the bits here. I used to do this with um, D and D figures way back in the day, so I kind of have a technique for this. It's like really, really fine. You're basically dusting it. That's what it sort of boils down to. You're giving this thing uh, a layer of patina, if you will, and because it's metallic, it's supposed to kind of give it. A, uh, a look that is very distinctive. Now I'm going to go very lightly over this. There we go. Does that, yeah, you're getting the, the impression there. 
Same with those little screws. The drier the brush, the better. And essentially, this is just going to make all of the pieces accent nicely and look like they're made of steel. At least that's the theory, anyway. Again, that, uh, that picture I keep quoting, that guy did an amazing job of really making this gun look genuinely metallic. And, I mean, he clearly knows what he's doing. He's got way more effort like he took off this whole bottom section installed leds in this thing which i was sort of tempted to do but to be honest that's that's a little outside of my pay scale when it comes to this kind of thing i'm uh i'm very much an amateur but as long as we get uh fairly successful results here and i'm liking what i'm seeing so far then uh that's good enough for me. Oh, wow, that does look nice. I do like that. Give that a little bit of an accent. Um, yeah, imagine this is uh, something that you've cooked. Basically, what I'm doing right now is it's like uh, spreading icing sugar on it. You know, it's just to give it a little bit of a shine. Not to actually paint anything. Not to give it... Not to actually you know, turn it into this color. I'm just more highlighting all of the different areas in a way. And I'm going to do the top. I'll leave the trigger because I think, I mean, I'll do it later, but I think that's going to be handy for grabbing. Okay, let's do along the top here. I'm not going to do there because that's actually where I'm resting this thing to dry the paint. But yeah, there we go. And there. You know what? I think I could do the other half because the way I'm going to be um, leaning this thing to dry, I think I should be okay. So let's, well, yeah, okay. You know what? I'm going to go for it. While the paint is still here and doing its thing. So there's side A. Let's, um, let's do the front. I won't do in here because that's again where it's going to be drying. But I really want to uh, let me get there's almost a propeller shape on this thing here which very closely matches Deckard's gun it has that sort of big barrel or whatever the heck that was like it, it looked like a, a cover over a barrel and clearly going for this particular water gun has a benefit that you get something with that distinctive barrel shape now, it looks like the paint is starting to dry, so let's get a little bit more and repeat again. So let's start down here because I want to use, I want to get the dry, I want to get the paint to slightly dry before I do it too much on all of the pieces. And again, I want to avoid where it says X shot there, but I can do this part. There we go. Like a little bit of a some kind of sparkly there. Okay, there we go. And move my way up around the chambers. Again, I'm just sort of lightly dusting, giving everything a layer of patina. Let me just get these a bit more. There we go. Okay. So go the other direction. Again, think icing sugar. That's basically what I'm doing here. Just adding like a hint of metal without it really being all that strong of a color. Now again, the top area, I think I can go a little bit stronger because that's supposed to be some of the metal. Get in there. Good, good. Now this is going to be tricky, especially for filming. Let's uh, get more of the silver and Give that, oops, I'm not catching it on camera, sorry. It's hard to hard to line this up and paint at the same time, so my apologies. But there we go, get in there. Oop, I kind of made the X shot visible there. All right, I better be careful. And dust around that. Now it's got a little bit of a verticality to it. Ooh, that's not bad. That is not bad. Let me compare it to the front, uh, or to this side. 
maybe a little more. We can go a little more aggressively here. Let's put some of the wetter stuff on there. I think I can be a little more. And this is like, there's really no rhyme or reason to this. You kind of have to go with your gut and match what you've done and try and give things a certain look without going too far. I'm going to just very lightly dust that and hope that the X-Shot logo doesn't come out too much. Um, let's go around here and in all the crevices. Again, I'll do the I'll do the trigger later. Um, what do we think? Does that look about done? I'm going to do the front here. And up there. There's one side. Not bad. The other side. Ooh, you know, that looks a little too... Well, okay, if I'm going to do that, then let's do the same here. Let's do... I'm trying to give this area here the same shine that I gave it there. All right, so let's go really in there. Okay, let's, let's even this guy out then to make him match. Let's do a little bit in there. That needs a little bit in there. Yeah, wow, actually, that, I quite like that. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, now there's areas I still need to do, but you know what, I need to leave this. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. I like it. I'm liking how that's turned out. Generally speaking, that's not bad. You know what? I am going to do up along here. Even though this is where I'm resting it, I'm going to take a chance that it doesn't actually need or that it doesn't leave a like it doesn't stick basically yeah I will leave the trigger though yeah yeah so trigger and where my fingers are right now still needs to be done but I think I'm gonna let that dry and uh, the very bottom. Actually, you know what? I can do the bottom. I can do the bottom. Let's give that a little bit more. Oh, and I got to do this back area too. All right, let's go lightly and liberally. Because you just want to give it a hint that there's some kind of steel here. Very awkward to hold. Pardon the shaking hands. And then we'll just give that a very small amount, because this is where the palm of my hand is going to be, so this is going to rub off over time. There we go. But I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that'll work. Yeah. I like it. Right, so I'm going to let it dry, then I'm going to do those bits. All right, well, this is it. Basically done now, with one exception. Those little LEDs, what's the plan there? I think I'm going to actually attach something external. I was thinking, like, do I paint something? There is a hole there, which would have been nice. It goes right the way through, you can see. You know, put feed something through there. But what do I do with the other one? Because on this side, that screw hole does not go through. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just plug the hole and then put another thing in that side. I think it's going to work. So, luckily, I picked up this little pack of assorted rhinestones and uh, little jewelry bits. And you can just about make out, yeah, they got some encrusted little diamondy guys there. Now, that's going to look possibly a bit crap. But you know what? This is all on a budget, and I think that'll work okay. Let's try them out. 
Okay, here's the little rhinestones here. Very difficult to pick up, but I got a plan for that. And they got a silvery back, so that'll make them reflect nicely. And I put one in that hole and one in that hole, just because that seems to be made for that purpose. I got my epoxy mixed up. I'm going to very lightly lace the corner or the circle of this here. And then just drop the, uh, the, the light or the rhinestone right onto there. Nice thing with epoxy, it will hold anything in place. So it may not need a heck of a lot here, but it will work like a charm. I sure as heck hope. Famous last words. And I happen to have a little uh, pair of tweezers here for exactly this purpose. Okay, let's set, set this in such a way that I can pick it up. And drop it right there. And slide it into place. Perfect. There's one. And the second one. And the old epoxy. Put a nice circle here. I'm going to have to eyeball the flip side of this guy and just make it somewhat equal to what this one is for position. And with the uh, tweezers. Drop it in place, close enough. Slide it so that it matches, and boom! Make sure it covers those holes. Okay, there's one pair. Now, the trick is going to be, I've got to eyeball that to be there. Let me just, actually, let me get a pencil. It's It lines up nicely with that particular one. Uh, that that piece of paint there is actually not great. So I'm going to leave the pencil to remind me which piece of paint is the issue. Do a nice big blob here because this one's going to be the best supported of the bunch. I hope it doesn't mean that the others eventually fall out. But again, with epoxy, you don't really have to worry about that so much. Totally missed the mark, but that's okay. Okay, I think, I think we have a winner. So there they are there. They're equal to each other, right? Yep. And yes, I have lined them up. You can see pretty decently there. That will work for me. We let it dry and we're done. There is the Blade Runner gun. I am very pleased with how this whole thing turned out. Yeah, it was a bit of work, and yeah, it's not screen accurate to the film, but it's accurate enough for my liking. I think it's going to look very nice on a shelf. 25 maybe 30 bucks total. I mean, uh, the gun, 7 I'm thinking 10 or 15 for the paint, and a couple of bucks for the little, you know, rhinestones. 
maybe maybe 25 or 30 bucks all told which is way better than that little squirt gun thing all right well until next time we'll uh See ya down the rabbit hole.